What affiliate marketing niche do you choose to make the most money? I mean, we can write about all kinds of stuff. There's AI software, new stuff. There's outdoor gadgets and gear, smart home devices, computers, technology. There's ayahuasca retreats in the Peruvian Amazon. There's chopstick lightsabers. There's leashes for chickens. I mean, there's 85 inch TVs that cost $23,000. So if people can buy it online, you can be an affiliate and make a cut of every sale. So in this video, I'm covering how to find the perfect affiliate marketing niche to make the most money. And if you stick to the end, I'll give you your exact keyword and content plan, how to find these keywords that make you a ton of money and how to find and join the best affiliate programs. So put those money goggles on and let's get right into it. All right, so we're gonna cover how to choose the perfect affiliate marketing niche in 2023. Now we have to remember, getting started is actually a lot more important than choosing this perfect niche, the right perfect niche at the beginning. We have to just start getting ourselves out there, creating content, joining affiliate programs and doing those things. And you wanna think a little bit broadly, focus on your own personal expertise and interests, not necessarily your passions or your hobbies or a perfect niche. And we're covering this exactly for you today. So here's what, you know how to think about choosing the perfect niche. So most niche advice is kind of backwards. So you can choose a tiny niche site or you can build it as a personal brand. You can do it either way. So let me show you some examples here. Here's something like Swim University, which is a niche site about swimming, pool care, and hot tubs. So they have a, a site, Swim University. They also sell stuff, so it's e Commerce. There's email tool tester. So this is um, a site that recommends email and CRM software. So another niche site. Then there's something like the wandering RV, which is an RV site. So they have rentals, RV insurance, loans, guides. So it's in the RV van life camping type niche. But then we can do also do it as a personal brand. So someone like Bob Vila, who's the do it yourself guy. He had TV shows back in the day, but he writes about all kinds of indoor and outdoor, you know, products, treehouse, plumbing software home builders, all kinds of different stuff. Or there's Tom's Guide, one of the biggest electronic you know, technology blogs out there that covers everything with reviews, how-tos, laptops, phones, tablets, all kinds of gadgets, kitchen gadgets, hundreds, thousands of articles on this site. Or there's something like my site. So I cover, it's just my name, and I write about software, business software, things to use if you're an online business owner. And then I also talk about how to do things, how to make money, how to start a blog, all of those. So when we think about niche site versus personal brand, that's a big decision at the beginning. And what I recommend is sometimes it's really hard to choose the perfect niche at the very beginning because think about it, we all start out as beginners, so you're tasked with the impossible task of choosing the perfect niche when you don't have all of the experience yet. So we'll cover how to do that in a second. Ultimately, you wanna target high income, low competition keywords. So things that you can rank for and make money with affiliate marketing, which in your niche, but that aren't gonna to be too competitive, that aren't 15 to 20 years old, that are impossible to rank for. So we'll show you how to find those. And you don't know what's gonna stick at first, you have to work quickly and pivot. So this is key. So we don't have to find the perfect niche at the beginning, but I'll show you that over time, we can hone in on what the perfect niche is, testing and based on data. So we teach that too in blogging like a startup and blog growth engine. If you're interested in learning all the strategies, you can watch my free 80 minute masterclass, YouTube link below, uh, 80 minutes of free training if you're interested in the exact process of starting an affiliate marketing business. But we don't know what's gonna work. You know, Maybe two out of 10 articles at the beginning might start ranking for stuff. So we don't wanna put all of our eggs in one tiny basket. We don't wanna pigeonhole ourselves with a domain name that's too small. You need to come up with something in a niche that you're like, okay, over time I can write at least 100 articles on this website, not like 10 and then I'm done. So we'll show you how to do that. And you really wanna let Google search drive your decision. So this isn't forcing a niche to work. You can't just write about health related content and you're going up against WebMD and Healthline and just keep staying at it, getting no traffic, no traffic. Google's not seeing you as an expert and then you just keep going. You have to let data inform your decision. So that's things like Google Search Console, Google Analytics, making sure that you're checking which pages are starting to get impressions and getting traffic. And then you kind of double down and you start building your knowledge graph within multiple sub niches. So for example, if you wanted to talk about pools and hot tubs and saunas, you could do all of them. Or if you wanted to be an outdoor expert, you wouldn't just create like the hikingtrailguy.com necessarily. That's a small niche site that's easy to quit, but you could put it at your name and then you could test some in hiking, some in camping, some in backpacking, do it based on keyword research, see what's working and hone in and start dominating multiple sub niches at a time. So we'll cover all of this, how to choose the perfect niche, how to find one for you. 
And really it's just double down on what's working and expanding from there is key. If you're a creator and want the easiest way to monetize your videos with your own Netflix style membership site, plus branded mobile and TV apps, you must know about Uscreen. So it doesn't matter if you have a channel about Pokemon cards or classic cards, you could be a beauty vlogger or a tech geek, whatever you're making content about, Uscreen can help you monetize your work easily. With their Uscreen platform, you can sell memberships, rent and host paid live streams to your most premium loyal subscribers. And with their tools, you can build your own website or even a white labeled mobile and TV app, including Android, iOS, Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. And thousands of creators have already gotten started and are earning recurring money from their videos. So try Uscreen for yourself, sign up for a free trial. The link is in the description below. Now, good affiliate marketing content, it's all about intent or search intent. So people search the internet with the intention to solve a problem. So it's either how to do something, how to start a blog, how to start a business, how to tie my shoes, how to bake a cake, you know, how to do stuff. Information is half of it. And the other half is products. So best products that they're interested in. They're looking for comparison posts, best laptops under a thousand dollars, best gaming chairs under $500, best outdoor hiking gear, things like that. So there's, they're trying to solve a problem though. They're either looking for information or for comparative content to buy something. And that's actually where affiliate marketing lives. So there's informational, basically how to do stuff, people looking to learn something, how to, what is, things like that. And then there's transactional. This is when they're making these buying decisions. And this is things like best review or product versus product. So like Nordic track versus Peloton or Sony, some type of Sony camera versus Panasonic or best, you know, photography cameras anything like that when they're looking for products, that's transactional in nature. So yes, there's other types of intent. There's navigational intent and other things, but these are the two that you only need to focus on when it comes to your affiliate marketing niche is informational and transactional. So let's look at a little graph here that I created. We have search volume on the left, competition on the bottom. And there's four quadrants and four ways to think of different keywords that we're gonna target for affiliate marketing because choosing the perfect affiliate marketing niche ultimately comes down to what keywords you choose that you can rank for and kind of testing the viability of a niche based on how competitive it is overall. And there's different ones. So first, you know, when we're looking at the column, there's search volume and competition. So this is low volume, lower competition. And this is more like informational posts that aren't gonna make you a ton of money, but I consider these early wins. They might be longer tail info posts, not really optimized for affiliate revenue yet, but you can actually start ranking for these. So these are the least competitive. So something in the biking or cycling niche would be like stationary bike workout for beginners. Long tail, not really related to a directly to a product, but pretty low competition, easy to rank for. Then we have high volume, lower competition. So these are more like info posts with a lot of volume because people aren't making a ton of affiliate revenue yet with these. These are what I call brand builders. So these are things that can get you a lot of traffic. You can make ad revenue with them, not directly so much affiliate revenue, but these can get you a lot of traffic you know, build your email list and all that stuff. So something like indoor cycling, a lot of search volume, not a huge amount of competition. Then we have highly searched, highly competitive transactional posts. These are what I call antiques because these things have been around for a long time. Every niche has them. They're really hard to rank for it keyword wise. It's almost best to avoid most of these. So like best stationary bikes, this thing's been, you know, people have been riding those for 20 plus years writing reviews of them on Google. So every niche has these best VPNs, best web hosting, best refrigerators, best mattresses, things that are dominated by media sites that are gonna be really difficult to rank for. So we kind of avoid those. But then we also have lower competition transactional posts. So this, you know, it's a little bit lower competition. So it'd be more towards the middle of this chart. But this is like emerging products. These are things that aren't that competitive yet, aren't super competitive, but are made for affiliate revenue. So something here like Nordic Track versus Peloton or something new, Peloton Alternatives, or things that are a little bit new, like some type of AI software or you know all kinds of different things in different niches. What products are new out there that you can re re uh, write comparative posts on? So ultimately, these are the two that you write. You write high volume informational posts to make ad revenue. They're not gonna make you affiliate revenue, but then you rank for new and emerging products in a niche, I say niche, people call me out on it. It's either niche or niche. You can say either one. Anyways, affiliate revenue is this lower competition transactional one. So these two work together. Let me show you some examples of this. So first, before we do that, you have to know the broader niche you wanna target. So when we talk about a broader niche, you start, you don't have to start at like this specific thing like indoor cycling. That's a little bit narrow, right? Or like the pool example. Like what if we just started with just um, indoor pools? or just hot tubs. It's a little bit too narrow. It's easy to quit. You can maybe you can write 20 articles on it, but it's not how you build a real affiliate marketing business. So to know the broader niche you want to target, you choose from a broad thing that you want to be known as. So if you put your face on a website or created some type of niche site, what would it be? Would it be technology, 
home, outdoor, software. You can, you can choose like a broader niche and then over encompassing test sub niches within it. So have an idea of that. And that can be based on your professional experience, any leverage that you have from a career, maybe something that you know a lot about because finding these unique keywords and new products is easier if you actually understand and know the niche. So start thinking about the broader niche there. Then you wanna build a topical map. So what this means is, how many informational posts do we write? How many transactional posts do we write? How do they all fit together to rank? So that's why it's like how to choose the perfect affiliate niche also ties in with how to write the informational content because you can't rank all the affiliate content on its own. You need that informational content to both have topical authority on the subject, build internal links, build traffic, build real trust with your audience. But I would aim for like a 75-25 informational to transactional content. So you're writing more informational content to then transactional content. We don't wanna be like a thin affiliate site with only best of roundup posts about products. We also wanna have a lot of informational content around it. So you start with some informational posts to get some traffic and some early wins. And you wanna just create content ASAP, at least 10 pieces of content doing keyword research. We'll show you exactly how, but let's look at a quick example. All right, so I put in best stationary bikes into Ahrefs to show some of this indoor cycling type of example. Now this was the antique one, the one that's been around for a long time. We see that it's pretty difficult to rank for. It's 64, the volume isn't all that high. The traffic potential is pretty good. But when we look at the top 10 ranking results, it's super competitive. There's Live Science, Men's Health, CNET, New York Times. It's just gonna be hard to rank for this. Or what about something like, you know, stationary bike workout for beginners? The traffic volume is pretty high. The chances of ranking are actually not as bad because we see there's a lower ranking site in the top 10. But even something like Nordic Track versus Peloton has pretty good volume, 800. Lower difficulty, traffic potential is 4.2K, that's per month. And then we're looking down here and we can see there's a ton of lower, there's a few lower ranking sites, lower domain rating, less authoritative sites in the top 10 like Treadmill Review Guru, ExerciseBike.net. So that's a good sign when there's lower authority sites ranking on the first page and the keyword difficulty score is low. By creating great content in this specific keyword, you can actually rank for something like this. Another example there is, let's say your niche is basketball. So I played basketball in high school. I love playing basketball. What would you write about if you were a blog trying to make affiliate revenue through that niche? Well, there's basketball shoes, there's basketball drills, that's informational. There's improving your vertical leap, that's another informational piece of content. Then we have like something like best vertical jump programs. So that would be an affiliate post where you're recommending the actual programs themselves. So your content lives in the middle of all of this, having informational and transactional intent. Those are the only two things that you need to create any type of good affiliate marketing blog. So you have the, the products in the niche and how to do things with the products in the niche. So that's kind of becoming an expert in that individual category. Let's talk about finding and validating good affiliate products. So there's different affiliate networks. There's Impact Share Sale, Commission Junction, Partner Stack, Partner Eyes, Flex Offers, AWIN. There's a lot of others. And these are platforms that have individual affiliate programs inside them that you can join. And really you wanna identify which partners pay the most. You can do the math on what, you know, potentially based on the keyword research that you do. And then the price of the product, the commission rates that you get dictate how much money you make. And then you can contact the brands directly. So you can contact them through the network, just click join to sign up for the affiliate program and grab your links. Or you can contact them directly. They usually have an email there where you can just ask to join if they don't answer your, uh, individual application. But let's look at a few different affiliate platforms, networks, and opportunities that we can find. All right, so this is Share a Sales Affiliate Network, and I clicked on the Marketplace, and this is showing me all kinds of different programs that I can join and if information on them. So you can see there's trending merchants here like Northwest Registered Agent, Deluxe, Good Morning, Grand Canyon West, Pet Supplies Plus. You can narrow it down by the different category here over on the left side. Let's say I was wanted to do like Northwest Registered Agent. I could click on this one and say, okay, it's $100 per sale. That's cool. Uh, average sales, 107. Average commission, 201. Earnings per click, 1,560. Now that's earnings per 100 clicks is actually how that math works. I don't know why they do it that way. But the numbers are strong. They're one of the most popular ones. They're, they have a power ranking in share sale. So they're a business and LLC formation service. So if I were to go to the Keyword Explorer, I could search for something like how to start a landscaping business. And then through that type of informational post even, I could link to Northwest Registered Agent to you know one step of starting your business. The first step is to file an LLC, sign up here. So you could do that. Or you could do how to start a business in, and I could do the matching terms tool and I could see where, what kind of, content could it create? So Florida, Texas, California, you could have individual articles on each state 
And this is kind of like a database type of SEO where people create all these different co pieces of content that might change words here and there, but you can rank for stuff like that. So if you look for something like how to start a business in Virginia, you see who's ranking, how to start an LLC, Zen Business, but you can see the difficulty somewhat low. You just find these opportunities. And this is an example of like even an informational post becoming an affiliate post by writing how to start a business. Well, first file an LLC, Northwest registered agent. Those are hundred dollars a sale. All right, next we're gonna look at impact formerly known as impact radius. So this is what their marketplace looks like. When you sign up as an affiliate, you can see all the different brands in here, uncommon goods, vineyard vines, Peacock, ESPN plus, if you're talking about different streaming services, pure hemp, so like CBD products, lots of different stuff. One I saw here just at the top when I was looking was something like watches. So live switch watches, Swiss watches, 10% uh, for every sale. So I don't know much about this brand, but you could find like a watch brand, let's say on Impact, and then you would go to uh, Hrefs and you could put it in like best watches and see what comes up in the matching terms tool. So there's best watches for men, smart watches, running watches, women's watches. What if we turn the difficulty down to like 25 hit apply, and then we can find the easier opportunities. Best watches under a thousand, best field watches, military watches. Let's try something like best watches under 2000. looks like the competition's only low at seven. And then we look down at the top 10, we can see a site, you know, wristenthusiast.com, uh, low domain rating, 26. We have another one, exquisite timepieces, 39, gnome watches. So this one's an easier one to rank for. So it's really like looking at the niche, Finding, look at all these different keywords you could write about watches, hiking Swiss. So Swiss would fix, it looked like a Swiss brand. Golf watches, dress watches, and then you join like, you can find one maybe an Impact, like that brand. You can Google then like the Rolex affiliate program if they have one, other major brands. You start adding your links in, but really it's about finding the keyword first. It's not just like, I wanna promote that company in that niche. It's like, what's the broad niche you wanna go in? What is the keyword opportunities? What are the articles I wanna write? best of roundup posts, and then go from there. All right, next let's check out Partner Stack, which is a popular affiliate network for software. So you can see all kinds of different programs in here in categories, like their social media, HR, marketing, productivity. But let's just see, we can see a lot of different featured brands here. AI email productivity tool. That's an interesting one. What if I put in AI email, AI email generator, AI email assistant, AI email software. And this could be interesting, AI email marketing software. This could be one that I would write because it looks so new, even though the volume is 10, I guarantee you it's a lot, a little bit higher than that. You know, it's gonna be probably in the hundreds. I've had articles where you see the volume in one of these tools is like non-existent, but you have a feeling like people are probably searching for that. Next up is Partner Stack, which has a lot of software affiliate programs inside of it. So you can join this and then you see like there's all kinds of brands in here. And you can just categorize it as well, narrow it down. But you can see there's a ton and they're all you know, in here differently. But when I see here is like email, uh, AI email productivity tool. So I'd go to Ahrefs, I'd put in like AI email matching terms, AI email generator assistant, AI email assistant, maybe that could be a good one. You look down, you could probably rank for it, low difficulty, volumes low. And what's interesting too is like, sometimes for things that are really new, like AI related stuff, this could say 10, the volume could be 10, but it's probably in the hundreds. It's just so new and early that if you have a hunch, this is why knowing the niche is important. But if you have a hunch, you probably can write, write it without just relying on these SEO tools. So you have to think about the business strategy behind this stuff. So that's an interesting example. Looking at partner stack, you can just look at different software. So I put in something like best software, and I go to the matching terms tool, I can see all kinds of different stuff. A lot of it's very competitive and old, but if I were to do, you know, difficulty of only 10, which is really low, I might be able to find a couple things like best clipping software, CRM software for hotels. So you find these individual opportunities, but you have to think of, okay, I wanna be in the broad software niche, or I wanna be broadly in, you know, AI or something like that. So that's another way to find typical, you know, affiliate programs with partner stack. All right, now let's look at a few affiliate example sites, different blogs, just to get an idea of kind of how this works when choosing your niche. So first I wanna show is something like the snow, outdoor snow type of niche. So this is like be outdoors, snowshoeing for beginners, how to get started. So this is an informational post, right? All about snowshoes and how they work. Or there's something like undiscoveredmountains.com, which is what is snowshoeing. So this is another piece of informational content, the history of snowshoeing, all about it. 
Another one is uh, New England Inn and Resorts, five beginner-friendly New England snowshoeing trails. So trails could be another informational piece of content related to the niche. Then let's see, like, if we wanted to make money, let's look at Ahrefs and we can see, like, best snowshoes. So pretty low difficulty, uh, decent search volume. And then we go down the list and we can see that there's a few lower authority sites, like treelinereview.com ranking in the top 10, which is a good sign. We could look at something like best women's snowshoes, which is another one. Or we could look at something like best budget snowshoes. So again, it's about finding those unique opportunities in each niche. All right, so let's say you're in the home niche and you want to write about furniture and recommend furniture, join affiliate programs, make commissions on expensive furniture. Well, here's a few examples of posts. So here's the 12 best uh, modular sectional sofas. This is by Beth R. Martin, who's actually in our community, one of our uh, Blog Growth Engine students who's ranking on page one, like number four for best modular sectional, which is really cool. So that's good to see. And there's affiliate links here for Burrow and different brands. There's also uh, rtaoutdoorliving.com, which is, you know, something like modular outdoor kitchens, pros and cons, plus the best options. So, you know, talking about them and then promoting and recommending different uh, outdoor kitchens. So shop now links all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, there's another one here, the family handyman, nine outdoor kitchen kits for cooking up a storm. Interesting. So kitchen kits, never heard of it, but it's one of these like outdoor kitchen sink thingies with, you can cook on it, I guess. Uh, so that's interesting. And then we look at some keywords in Ahrefs. We can see like modular furniture systems, an interesting one, 22 lower difficulty or best modular furniture, a lot of good traffic potential, low difficulty. What is modular furniture? Very low, you know, competition, good volume there. So there's a lot of interesting things. You could put like best tables into Ahrefs, find all the variations of tables, chairs, armoires, whatever furniture you need, beds, patio stuff. You just put the words in, best patio. You go to the matching terms tool and you see what happens, you, you know, patio heater, patio heaters, doors, umbrellas for wind. You, you put the difficulty down to like 20, you find the easy stuff, this is what you write. Best patio furniture covers, patio misting system. It's an endless slew of things in different niches that you can find. Let's talk about the fitness niche. So there's tons of fitness opportunities. The informational intent in fitness is keywords around workouts and exercises, right? A lot of search volume for those, not a ton of affiliate revenue for those, but I'll show you some examples. So here's one from Greatest, Leg Up Your Home Workout, 15 Leg Exercises. So showing pictures and doing leg exercises. We have 10 workout plans for women at home, beginner friendly, which is nice. And then we have a few uh, transactional ones like Tom's Guide, so best home gym equipment, 2023. So like exercise bikes with affiliate links to Amazon, Walmart, and Lowe's. Peloton Tread with you know Amazon and Peloton affiliate links as well. Or something like P90X Review. Do the workouts still work? Is Tony Horton still jacked? I think so. I believe in it. P90X, and you kind of cover the review there. So looking at Ahrefs, there's things like leg workouts at home. Medium difficulty, kind of hard, but a lot of search volume, right? That's the article we found. Beginner home workout, pretty hard as well. Best home workout gear, pretty hard. A lot of search volume. P90X review, not as hard. Difficulty is low, search volume is decent. So fitness is like moderately competitive. Uh, sites have been talk talking about fitness for a while. There's big media sites that do it, but it's like gauging the tolerance of your niche. I think when we think about what are the easiest niches to write about versus the hardest, well, the hardest are gonna be things that big media sites write about like Forbes, like business, software, finance, gadgets, and tech. Those are probably the most competitive. And when we look at the least competitive, think about affiliate niches like on Amazon, things like outdoor, goods and gear. That's not as competitive. You don't see Forbes writing about that as much. Indoor products. Furniture is not too bad sometimes. Uh, it just depends. Like power tools are easy. Gardening. There's all kinds of physical products. When you think about what niche you want, what do you love? What do you buy on Amazon? And then what can you look at a tool like Ahrefs or SEO tools and find these opportunities that way? So we can also look at like the finance niche, for example, as a competitive one. So here's one like what is robo investing? Kind of difficult or best robo advisors. So you've got someone like NerdWall here writing about robo advisors or Money Under 30 writing about them, but there's different content there. Or if you're in the you know SaaS business, you could say how to start a SaaS business, software as a service, difficulty is not as bad, volume's 40, traffic potential's all right. And then you can find like some software SaaS stuff like best no code app builder, that search volume's increasing low difficulty. So it's really about finding these opportunities. Like if I think of finance and I'm like, all right, I wanna create a finance site. I'm a financial planner, I'm good to go. I'm gonna put in best credit card. 
and I'm going to go to the matching terms. So I'm going to see how competitive it is. Well, you can see like best, okay, best travel credit card, 78. Best, I'm going to put in an S, best credit cards. And look at this, best credit cards, 85. Nerd Wallet, the site's sitting at the top. They get affiliate commissions, percentages on people signing up for credit cards. They're basically printing money at this point. And it looks kind of competitive. Best credit cards to build credit, all kinds of different stuff. But if you look at the difficulty and I want to bring it down to 20, what would even appear here? Let's see. So there's still opportunities. There's not as many. Best business travel credit cards at 16. Best credit cards for young adults. No annual fee. So you'd have to go long tail on something like that. Right? So we're finding that. Versus crazy difficulty or something like fishing. Like you like fishing, yeah, there's all kinds of products, lines, rods, reels, hooks, lures, jig heads, live bait, bait casters, nets. There's all kinds of products when it relates to fishing. But you can see like something like that's less competitive. Best fishing kayaks, rods, lines, like the things that are actually a little bit more uh, product based, not super, you know, super competitive things that are actually physical products are a lot easier to rank for. So think about that when choosing your niche. What is your pain tolerance? Basically, if you want to go into finance and choose that as your niche, sure, you could make some money and you could find like, you know, maybe some niche low, uh, insurance examples. If I go to insurance and I put the difficulty down to 20 and I apply that, I could see, all right, what kind of insurance articles could I write? I could write like RV insurance, 19 difficulty, that's not bad. Landlord insurance, pet insurance, dental insurance. So like, yeah, there's potentially opportunities out there. Definitely, there's opportunities in every niche and that's the thing. When we think about the best niche, the best niche, whatever you wanna call it, the best category of things, they're not static. They come and go, search volume changes. There's all kinds of new products in every single niche. So the key is finding ones that are low competition. You can find you know a lot of articles that you can write and monetize. So the key ultimately is to pick a broader niche to start with and publish content and then figure that perfect niche out over time. So think about new and emerging things in your niche that aren't competitive. That is the key. Timing is a crucial component of affiliate marketing. Getting in early, writing the content, you know, before most people do is key. So if you're going to go into something like software, you would do like AI software or newer stuff. If you're going into fitness, go into like, you know, if you started a, a blog about Pelotons and at home fitness during the pandemic, that would have been the perfect timing for that. So what's new in every single niche? So really when we think about what's the perfect niche, there's, there's like different categories that we can bucket it in. There's software, which gives recurring affiliate commissions, pretty competitive because of that recurring nature of the affiliate uh, links. There's finance which is also really competitive because you can make percentages of giant things like retirement plans, loans, all that stuff. So that's really competitive. And then over here, I think there's physical products. So those are the physical products is the least competitive because you get one-time commissions on the sale of these products. But the key is finding high price products, things that people buy on Amazon for $1,000, $2,000 or so, and figuring out what physical product niche you want to get into. Is it outdoor? Is it indoor? Is it furniture? Is it Thing, you know, there's there's opportunities, endless opportunities everywhere. It's really tying it to your identity, choosing something that you will not quit, that you will continue building. That's why I created my site just at my name. At first, it was just a digital resume. I was going to use it for my career. But once I started making money with it, I just couldn't stop. So that's the key of the difference between like choosing the perfect niche versus building it around you. You are the niche. You are the brand. You can build something for yourself. Start that blog, create affiliate marketing content, and base it on informational and transactional content that can make you a lot of money. So if you want to learn how to master this entire process, make sure to watch my free blogging masterclass. Click the YouTube description link below. It's 80 minutes of free training, exactly how to create the content. Not just do the keyword research, but write it, join the affiliate programs, do SEO, backlinks, all of that stuff. How to build a true online business in the 2020s. Hope, hope you found this video helpful. Please check out other videos on my channel. Subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in the next one.